So in this core, uh, in the mag magnetizing core, uh, we have this hysteresis loss that we talked about. Every time we tra traverse a loop, uh, you know, the area of that loop represents certain energy lost. So that results in hysteresis loss, and that is the characteristic of the core that we are using. And in addition, we have something called eddy current loss. And this loss takes place, which is uh, shown here, uh, just to show the basic principle, that if you are uh, creating this flux, which is varying with time uh, due to this uh, winding over here, then uh, if you have a solid core like this, consisting of, uh, let's say, silicon steel, then there'll be, you know, uh, there'll be circulating currents. This core would act like a short-circuited <coughs> winding, in a way. So there'll be circulating currents, but it is possible, to, and there'll be losses with it, but it is possible to reduce that loss by laminating this core, as shown here. <coughs> so in this case, th this current that will be uh, flowing due to DFDT that is relegated to uh, smaller loops like this. And the consequent consequence of this turns out to be reduction in this eddy current loss. So our loss is due to these eddy currents. And these laminations can be anywhere from 0.2 to 1 millimeter thick when we are dealing with 50 or 60 hertz operation. Okay, And uh, these losses then are represented by a parallel resistor uh, in this diagram, uh, which we talked about earlier. Okay, so uh, quite often these parameters are supplied by the manufacturer, but if not, uh, they can be obtained by what is called a short open circuit test, which allows us to calculate the magnetizing reactance and core loss equivalent resistance, and also uh, by a short circuit test, which allows us to calculate these leakage impedances. So if you look up any, any book which deals with uh, transformers, uh, they are presented uh, in great detail. And uh, in this uh, case, uh, uh, since our focus is not so much on designing transformers, uh, we will skip over this portion here. So uh, if you want to represent this transformer in a simple manner, then we can forget about the magnetizing reactants and only deal with the leakage impedances here. So that's shown over here. On the primary side, there's a leakage impedance. And on the secondary side, there is this leakage impedance. And, uh, uh, you know, we have NP and N sub S number of turns, P for primary, S for secondary, which we can say if we divide by NP on this side, we get one. If we divide by NP also here, we get this little n, and this n is then NS over NP. So we can uh, simply model this uh, like this over here. Okay. The other thing we should note, and this is done very often, is that we can transfer leakage impedance from one side to the other. <clears throat> so here I'm showing how you can take this uh, leakage impedance on the secondary side all to the primary side in this simplified representation, where this N here is given by the ratio of uh, secondary divided by the primary number of turns. <clears throat> so here, as you can see, that uh, if I were to put a short here, just to show how we can transfer this, if I put a short here, this, uh, uh, the currents here are related, right? IS and I, IP are related. So, so you'll see that uh, this VS prime here is equal to the product of this and this, and uh, divided by, uh, divide by N. So currents are related and voltages are related. So VP over VS is equal to uh, one over uh, N, like this here, right? So that's where this N shows up right here. 
Okay, and then IS and IP are related by this equation here. And uh, therefore, uh, if you substitute for IS in terms of IP, uh, the voltage here, VS prime, is given by this equation. And uh, under this condition, VP is VS prime times the drop across here, which is this term here. And uh, therefore, VP over IP with this short circuited, and that's the impedance looking from the primary side into the whole system, uh, that is uh, here I represented it as Z sub PS, and that will be equal to in this uh, just uh, Z sub P times what you get from here, which is uh, ZS over uh, N squared from here. So you can see that using this, we can represent this system uh, by this simpler equivalent circuit here. So that shows how we can take the leakage impedance from one side to the other. The same thing could be done uh, by, you know, keeping this, taking this out of here and putting it over here. So a similar uh, discussion can be carried out to transfer from the primary side to the secondary side. <clears throat> uh, now, quite often, uh, we need to represent these transformers uh, in per unit. For example, in uh, power flow, uh, if there's a transformer, we would like to represent it in per unit. So uh, what we have to rep remember is that uh, the rated primary and secondary voltage are given by uh, this ratio here. Similarly, the currents are related by the Stern's ratio here. And uh, the base quantities are uh, represented by the voltage rated, rated voltage divided by the rated current. So that's the base on the primary side, and this is the base on the secondary side in terms of the secondary uh, rated voltage and current. And therefore, the ratio of these two is uh, 1 over n squared. Okay? So if, if we do it that way, then... Uh, you know, for example, uh, if we transfer the leakage, uh, secondary leakage to the primary, and we had this quantity here, and uh, dividing that by the base of the primary side, we get this transformer per unit over here, ZTR per unit. So this is a leakage impedance of the transformer in per unit, okay? And uh, all these quantities here are in per unit, and they'll be pretty much equal to these two currents, of course, are equal to each other, and these two are different only by the drop across the, the leakage impedance. So the main thing to notice here is that, uh, you know, th this is a much simpler uh, circuit because even though uh, the voltages on the primary and the secondary side are very much different because of the number of turns, but in per unit, they are pretty much the same. The other thing we have to remember is the, uh, the phase shift that takes place because of uh, transformer winding. So quite often, uh, these transformers may be connected in a Y arrangement like this on one side, and then on the secondary side, th these windings are connected in delta. So this winding is coupled to this winding, and uh, this winding here uh, is to this, and this winding here to this over here, like that. So they may be actually uh, three separate transformers, which are connected in a Y on uh, this side, and uh, and they could be connected in a delta uh, on the secondary side. <coughs> okay. So we'll see the phase shift there. Uh, so also, uh, you know, like I mentioned to you, uh, uh, we need to include these transformers in. Uh, studies like uh, power flow. And uh, so here is an example where, uh, and this comes from our three bus uh, system uh, that we have seen earlier, <coughs> where there was a 345 kV line between bus one and bus three. But what if we have a 500 kV line and we have two transformers here, 345 to 500 and then 500 down to 345 kV. 
So both of these buses are 345 kV buses over here. <coughs> so what we have to do is we have to, uh, you know, this 500 kV line parameters would be given in, let's say, ohms. And we have to convert that into uh, per unit. So what, what we have to do is, let's say we are going to represent the whole system on 345 kV level, and conventional thing is to use 100 MVA as the base. So we will come up with this uh, base impedance over here, and uh, we can calculate that using this 345 kV line-to-line -line voltage squared divided by 100 MVA for the base here. <coughs> and whatever is the, the impedance of this uh, 500 kV line in ohms, or MOS, we will, uh, you know, normalize it with this base quantity over here. Now, the reactance of these transformers may be given on the transformer base. And, uh, the, you know, they may be given a 345 kV, just as an example in this uh, chapter, and let's say 1,000 MVA rather than 100 MVA. So what, you know, it's given in per unit on this basis, what we need to do is to convert it to this over here. So what uh, we, we, we have to, just by looking at this first equation, we can see that per, per unit on this new basis, which is this, and the, this per unit is the original basis, which is this, uh, these two are related by the ratio of MB, MVA base in the new system versus the original system, okay? So pretty, then, once again, everything is on per unit on, on this basis over here. So we have to keep that in mind. The other thing we have to remember are uh, there's some other things, uh, like uh, what are the efficiencies of these transformers? <clears throat> so we always have defined the energy efficiency as the output divided by the input, right? Which is, uh, an input is uh, uh, the output plus losses. So we can write it in this form here. And, uh, you know, we are dealing with extremely high power here, so efficiencies have to be very high. And they are, in large power transformers, efficiencies are in excess of 99.5%, 5, 9 okay? And winding resistances are well below uh, 5%, or 0 0.05 per unit. <clears throat> so when we go to model these things, uh, the leakage reactances really dominate, which could be anywhere from 7% to 20%. So at... Uh, at low voltages, low voltage transformers, they are close to 7%, but when you go to very high voltages, they could be as high as 20% because we need a you know, great deal of separation between the, the windings here. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, the other thing we have to keep in mind is uh, something called regulation in these transformers. And that is given by this equation, as you'll expect. Uh, you know, if you apply certain voltage uh, here, uh, what you get out here in per unit is uh, not the same because they drop across this leakage impedance here. So that's, uh, assuming this to be purely reactive, uh, this equation is written, and you can see that uh, this uh, drop is uh, a function of the power factor uh, of the, the current drawn on this side here. 